We fix it to make this town real smoky. Is this really what you wanted? This is what he wanted. He was fist pumping. He was smiling. He was showing all the teeth below. This is what you asked for. Now the stress is on his face. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about my second favorite character of all time, Sergei Dragunov. One thing that I really like about Dragunov is one, his attacks, his demeanor, his outfit, his personality. But I don't know what it is, but just like the sounds, the shrieks, the yelling, it's just music to my ears. That is what drew me into the character. And talking today about his story, I'm honestly surprised I haven't got to this sooner. I do know that there's some sort of rivalry with Raven, Master Raven. I think he has a crush or some sort of interest in Alyssa. We'll try to figure those things out today and see what his purpose is. I'm excited. Starting off with the biography. Sergei Dragunov is a character in the Tekken series. He was first introduced in Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection as one of the two new characters, the other one being Lily, and has returned in every subsequent game. Dragunov is a member of the Spedinaz, who have dubbed him the White Angel of Death because of his overwhelming fighting powers and insecurable personality. One thing that I do want to say about this is I learned a lot about the Spedinaz from playing Call of Duty. Snami Bog. Remember, no Russian. Knowing that Dragunov is a part of the Spedinaz, that adds a new level intensity to the character. Also seeing that he's the White Angel of Death, he's one of the most feared inside of this organization. That adds a new level of intensity to him as well. Talking a little bit about his biography and the personality, Dragunov is cold, calculating, and totally impassive when fighting opponents. Aside from a few lines of dialogue, Dragunov is an elective mute, barely uttering a single word throughout the entire series. This trend either annoys, confuses, or unsettles other characters. He serves his motherland with the utmost diligence and loyally follows orders when given. He also enjoys singing as a hobby as seen in one of his win animations where he's humming after defeating his opponents. You win. <laughs> now the part there where they say elective mute. He's not mute as in he can't talk, it's simply that he chooses not to talk. I have some screenshots in here of the few times Dragunov spoken. There's only, I believe, what did it say? So far in the series, Dragunov has only spoken eight lines of dialogue, all of which are in the scenario campaign and two of which were only single word sentences. So I have here a screenshot of all the things he ever said. And it's very little, but what's so interesting about this too is one, the only time he ever spoken twice was to Devil Jin. To Devil Jin, Devil Jin says, I was looking forward to tearing up some real troops. This has been a disappointment. Sergei Dragunov says, I've been looking for you. We'll see why in just a second when we get into a story. Devil Jin says, are you the last? Hopefully you can provide me some entertainment. Sergei Dragunov says, you will not escape. The only other time he speaks this much is to Raven. Of course, they have some big rivalry. Hopefully that's mentioned in the story and we can try to understand what's happening there. But what's the white angel of death doing here? So this is kind of cool. You can see that Raven is kind of familiar with this mythological soldier and is kind of surprised seeing this person roaming around wherever they're at. Continuing reading, it says, this Despite not being necessarily evil, Dragunov is very psychotic and unreadable. He shows very little interest in socializing with others, only focus on the mission at hand, and shows no mercy towards his enemies or opponents, and if provoked enough, will kill them if they are jeopardizing the mission. Because of these qualities, even his allies tend to be intimidated by his presence. And I kind of like this because like, his gameplay kind of mirrors this. He's gonna beat him. 
He has to. Oh, oh, oh you got to be careful. No. And that's something that you rarely get hit by, but JDCR ready for it. Look at the time. Look at the time. He's going to have to either stay on the Look ground. Look at the time. Look at it. Oh, oh my no. God. JDCR with oh an amazing comeback. God. He's from the future. He knew it. He's from the future. He's already seen it. And I think that's really cool to see how the developers are able to translate these personalities into gameplay and two, how it's, it's done so seamlessly. The part that talked about him not necessarily being a bad guy, I think this is referencing the tweet from Harada. He's a decent military man. That's in quotes. Not bad, not good, just decent military. And this is in response to someone saying, is dragging off a good or a bad person? And this kind of goes back to the idea that there is no good and bad in war. In war, it's only your side versus the other side. I'm not really going to go into real world examples, but I'm sure you guys can use your imagination. Think about moments in time where both sides wasn't really wrong, but at the same time, they weren't really right. This is what Dragunov kind of embodies in the Tekken universe. That soldier, that warlike mentality, where it's like you're fighting for your country, for your people, the motherland. You killed Dragunov. I'll kill you. Huh? Who killed Dragunov? What are you talking about? Do you want to die? Is Sergei tournament viable now? Come on, dude. Do you want me to insult you? What are you doing to yourself? Viable? <laughs> We're right here. It says top eight. <laughs> it says top eight right there, and there's two fucking dragon off. Thank you. Two of them. Now, jumping into the story Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection. This is the first game where he was introduced, so I'm really not expecting much, but who knows? Maybe they will surprise us. A frozen land buried in a dense subarctic forest. While undergoing geological research in preparation for the development of natural resources. So they're mining, they're, they're about to start mining for resources, probably oil or something like that. And a nominal object is discovered below the permafrost. The military quickly calls special forces into action and the entire area is completely sealed off. The mysterious object is then transferred under absolute secrecy to a research facility for further study. Now this is kind of interesting here. What, what is this object they find? They start setting up to, I guess, drill for oil or something like that. And they find some thing in the snow. And this thing is so spectacular that they stop everything. They call in a whole different set of team, a whole different branch of government, and they start excavating this thing and they take it to some off the grid research facility. What is this? A month later, military headquarters receive an investigative report regarding the mysterious object and decides to order one of the men working at the dig on the, what is that? Calistine mission? That man is Dragunov, a member of the elite special forces team who was feared in battlefronts throughout the world as the white angel of death. He acknowledged the mission with a silent nod and leaves for Japan. Oh, okay, what? What's happening? What's happening? So they find this thing in the ground and they're researching it for a whole entire month. And I'm guessing the mission was about to at this point, I'm guessing the Mishima Zaibatsu has agents all over the world. Whenever something happens, the Mishima Zaibatsu somehow finds out about it. Christine, her grandfather had some sickness. They found out about that and they swooped in. Dragonoff, the Russians, they have this object and they're doing the best that they can to keep it secret. And they still find out about it. The Mishima Zaibatsu have some really good spies and they need to give those spies a pay increase. After finding out about this object, they do what? It says military headquarters receive an investigative report regarding the mysterious object and decides to order one of the men working at the dig on the Catalstein mission. What, is, what does that mean? Clandestine. Illegal immigrants. Sometimes the Tekken lore, they use these super big words, or not even big words, but it's just so wordy. You guys know what I mean when I say a sentence is too wordy and you kind of lose the meaning of what is, I really don't understand this. 
It sounds like the mission was about to find out about this object and they do something that triggers the Russian government to send Dragunov in response. I don't know what that something is to where they would think, okay, let's send Dragunov to compete in the tournament. You know, what did they do there? That's just a question. If someone knows, please answer. In the ending description, I'm guessing this is not canon because a lot of the ending descriptions aren't. Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection says, Scientists working for the Russian government have Devilgen inside a water tank. Activating the tank, electricity flows from the tank Devilgen is inside to a similar one in the opposite side of the room. Two glowing demonic eyes can be seen in a tank on the opposing side of the room. What is that? I need to see this. Hold on. Where is this at? Okay, so you can see the tank with Devil Chain. You can see the wings. You can see the scientists there on the left side. Are they creating their own Devil Chain soldier here? This part right here looks like the head. I can see a small silhouette of a head. And it looks like this is supposed to be a horn and that's supposed to be a horn. And then it also looks like there's kind of like spikes here. You know how Az Azale has those like spikes coming out of his back and stuff like that? It, it looks like the unpure form of the devil gene. I have no clue. I have no clue who this is or what this is. If I had to take a guess, I would say they're just trying to make their own devil gene soldier. That's the only guess I could come up with. One thing about the stories that isn't canon. So basically this is like a what if scenario. If Dragunov won, and if all the cards fell in his favor, this is what he would do. Now, skipping into Tekken 6, still no mention of Raven, but I know Raven uh, had a big impact on Tekken 6, so hopefully there's some conflict. Sergei Dragunov receives orders from Russian military command to capture the organism known as Devil. In pursuit of his mission, he successfully infiltrated the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 5, but was unable to locate the organism. Russia was in complete disorder with rampant civil disturbances. What does that mean? So this part here is pretty much straightforward all the way up until they start talking about Russia was in complete disorder with rampant civil disturbances. This is what I mean when I say too wordy. Are they trying to say that there's rioting happening in Russia? Are they trying to say that there's some sort of civil war? Is the mission was about to attacking? Because in Tekken 6, this is when the mission was about to was attacking on all fronts. I still can't understand how the mission was about to, this is a company, this is a corporation, how they're able to fight off all of these countries. It doesn't make sense for me. In my mind, I think if the mission was about to was trying to go to war with, let's say, America, Russia, China, um, all of these great countries, first off, you would just, you know, talk to Japan because Japan is the one who fostered this sort of uh, company that is trying to take over the world. And then two, once you just hit their military bases all around the world, I get that Jin, Kazuya, and Hiachi are pretty much unkillable, but that doesn't mean that you want to be able to take down their military. I just kind of struggle with the idea of the Mishima Zaibatsu being able to go around the world and and basically annoy everyone for pretty much 40 years at this point. The first instance that we've seen the Mishima Zaibatsu being corrupt or evil, to my knowledge, is the Big Apple War with Leroy Smith. If you guys saw the story breakdown that I did for Leroy Smith back in like the 70s or 80s, Heiachi was messing around with New York and causing trouble out there. And I know being an American, America does not like other countries messing with America. The only place that is going to ruin America is America. We're getting off topic. Let's continue reading. 
Russia was in complete disorder with rampant civil disturbances, all believed to be caused by the covert actions of the Mission Zabatu operative, commissioned to suppress the national unrest. Dragunov spent quite some time fighting across the country. Okay, so the Mishima Zabatu is sort of fueling these riots, fueling these civil unrest is what they call it. And the Russian government answer to this is to let's send Dragunov to deal with the Mishima Zabatu. Let's send Dragunov to sort of try and alleviate the problem. Because I don't know if, if in the Tekken universe, right, if Dragunov is like some beacon of hope. If people look to Dragunov as like the savior and like he's like the Captain America of Russia. That's kind of what it seems like because sending one person to sort of foils this whole like civil unrest, that's a lot riding on the shoulders of one person, you know? Without any hesitation to stop the Mishima Zabatu of intruding the Russian government, the leaders decide to overthrow their leader, Jen Kazama, and decide to put the bounty on his head before anything gets worse. He was eventually called back by the Russian military in order to infiltrate the King of the Iron Fist Tournament 6 to crush the Mishima Zaibatu. I kind of heard about this. In Tekken 6, Jin Kazama got a bounty put on his head and I guess that was the Russian government trying to basically stop him. He's pulling all these strings and even Dragunov can't find him. So they put a bounty on his head then they pull Dragunov back and they send him to the King of the Iron Fist Tournament. Because here's one thing about the King of the Iron Fist Tournament. Jin may be hiding wherever, right? It's hard to track down a demon who can move super fast and fly and all these things. But you know he's going to be at the, the King of the Iron Fist Tournament. In my mind, in my opinion, I would just, I hate to say it, but nuke the building. If you know Jen is inside of it, you have to just take that chance and blow it up. Because at this point, right, the whole world is in disarray. Everyone is fighting in Tekken 6. So whoever is going and watching the King of the Iron Fist tournament in Tekken 6, you have to view them as enemies. Because if they're going and they're watching this, to basically, the people who are watching the King of the Iron Fist tournament in Tekken 6, they're basically watching the war as if it's some TV show. They're basically encouraging the violence. And viewing it that way, you would have to still try and take, like if you could take Jin out in that moment, if I was in command, I would say take it. Blow up the building, try and eliminate Jin once and for all. Because you can't miss that opportunity. Once he leaves that building, who knows where he'll go and who knows what he'll do next. Or at least put a sniper in the building, in the crowd. If, if the Mishima Zabatsu can have spies and agents everywhere, you can do the same too. It probably wouldn't work. You know, the Devil Ching plot armor would save Jin, but the effort, you know, the, the, the at least they're trying to eliminate this very, very dangerous person because that's what happens in the real world. In the real world, if you start doing things that other countries don't like, they are gonna take every opportunity they can to eliminate you, right? The ending for Tekken 6 for Dragunov. Of course, this is not canon. I'm guessing this is another what if scenario. In the what if scenario when Dragunov wins, he defeats Azel and he's about to extract it. He's about to take it back to the homeland. And Raven shows up and takes the orb. The fact that Raven is specifically going after the orb is kind of interesting because to my knowledge, I thought this orb was in Zafina's possession, but this orb is actually like a part of Azel. I don't know if this orb is like his true body and the whole dragon thing is just like a extension of it. Um, but this orb is a lot more powerful than we know. And the fact that Raven specifically goes for it uh, shows that Raven, maybe Lars, maybe Jin Kazama, they know a lot more about the devil gene and Azel than we're told. That's what this tells me. But of course, this is not canon. This is another what if scenario. Going into Tekken 7, just looking at this paragraph, it's way smaller than what we get in 5 and 6. So I'm interested to see what they what they give us. Sergei Dragunov entered the King of Iron tournament on army orders. At the designated arena of his first match, a woman appeared before him. 
There was something strangely familiar about her. It didn't take Dragunov long to figure out who she was and wasted no time in readying himself for combat. So of course this is Master Raven. After defeating Master Raven, Dragunov orders one of his soldiers military tankers to shoot her with a single missile. As his opponent burns in a blaze of fire, Dragunov walks away chuckling to himself and smirks at the camera. <laughs> Now, okay, first off, are tanks allowed in the King of the Iron Fist tournament? <laughs> Once again, what are the rules? In Katarina's story, someone showed up with a gun and started shooting at both of them. Not only did they shoot at Katarina, right? The, the, the objective was to kill Katarina, but Gigas gets in the way and they just start shooting Gigas too? Oh my God. And this one, Dragunov gets a full tank, a whole entire tank. That means this tank was on standby. You know, you can have a soldier hiding in a box, uh, solid snake style, but a tank, wow. And then how brutal it is as his opponent burns in a blaze of fire. That means they didn't even hit this, they didn't even hit Master Raven with an explosive. They hit Master Raven with a incendiary rocket. They wanted her, they wanted to cause maximum damage and send a message. That's fascinating. And that kind of calls back to him being the white angel of death, him preparing this incendiary missile. Now that's pretty much it for his story. Two big questions. One, still, what is that thing that they found in the snow way back in Tekken 5 DR? Two, what are they planning to do if they capture Devil Jin? That creature in the tank looked like some new Russian experiment. I would love to see that creature be made. Think about this. Okay, this is theory time, speculation time. I would love to see Jin face another Devil Jin creature. This is one reason why I want the Hydro Clan to be reintroduced into the story because Jin is like the peak power. No one could, he's like the Goku of the series. No one can really touch him, but I want to see someone else with the devil gene, maybe the devil himself, or maybe a Hydro clan member, someone who's on his level and maybe even better. I think it would be cool to see devil gene put in a position where he's struggling, put in a position to where he can't just devil gene cheat codes his way to victory, right? But that's just a what if scenario. That's gonna be it for this story. I had a really good time reading this, even though there was a lot of things that's left unknown, I still think it's good. I'm interested to see what they, actually too, I don't know if he'll be in Tekken 8. I think Dragunov will be DLC, and I wonder what they'll do with his story if he is in fact DLC, because what we know about DLC in Tekken 7, their stories is, is a little bit more thought out. Their stories, isn't garbage like everyone else on the base roster. It's a little bit more expansive. So if he is actually on DLC, at least we could look forward to more answers in the story. But that's gonna be it. No more extensions, no more ideas. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe, check out some of the other videos that I made, but that's gonna be it. See you next time, bye bye.